I know period products can be annoying and recently I have discovered a whole bunch of new products that I had no idea about. So one day I was scrolling through Facebook and I happened to come across this ad for the Flex Menstrual Disc. I thought it looked super interesting so I clicked on the link and watched the video and from that point I knew I had to try this product out. So that is what I'm going to be doing today for you guys. You are going to be seeing my honest review and my thoughts and opinions on the Flex Menstrual Disc. Before we get into that, let me go ahead and introduce myself. My name is Veranda and I am a stay-at-home mom of three children, hoping to make that four here very soon. I upload once a week on Fridays and I upload motherhood videos, tips and lessons I learn, as well as review videos like this one. So if you are not already subscribed, please hit that red subscribe button down below. It is free and it will ensure that you stay up to date with all of my future videos. So now with that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump right into this video. Okay guys, so when I first discovered the Flex Menstrual Disc, my mind was absolutely blown because I never knew anything like this even existed. Whenever I think of period products or whenever I thought of period products, the only thing that ever really came to my mind were traditional tampons and pads. So whenever I discovered this item, I knew I had to go ahead and test it out. So what exactly is the Flex Menstrual Disc? It is a ring made out of medical grade silicone and it has like a little bag or they call it the catch that attaches to this ring and it goes inside of the vagina and sits at the base of the cervix in an area called the vaginal canal. So unlike traditional tampons or pads, instead of absorbing the fluid, it just collects it inside of the catch. And supposedly this um, flex disc can hold as much as three super tampons. So I am going to go ahead and read you guys some of the claims from the flex company. Um, so some of the claims are that you can wear it for up to 12 hours, even during sleep, exercise, swimming, and more. Uh, they also claim that you can have mess-free period sex, which personally isn't something that I am interested in, but there is no judgment if there is anybody else watching this video who is interested in trying it for that reason. They also claim that it reduces cramps in up to 60% of users and reduces irritation and dryness in up to 80% of users. And lastly, the Flex Disc has not been linked to toxic, toxic shock syndrome. I always have a hard time saying that for some reason, so I'm just gonna go ahead and call it TSS. It has not been linked to TSS, which is pretty amazing. So now I am going to go ahead and pull this thing out of the package and show you what it looks like. This is the box that it came in. I think it is pretty fancy looking and I bought this from Target. I bought it for $14.99. You can also buy them like on Amazon or on their actual website, which is flexfits.com. Um, the same pack of 12 for $14.99 or you can buy a 24 pack for $27.99 and on their website, they do have free shipping to anyone in the US. This is not a sponsored video. I just tried the product and I figured I would throw that out there. I am going to leave a link to the FlexFits website down below in the description if you guys are interested. Um, so yeah, let me go ahead and show you when you open the box, this is what it looks like. It has all of your discs in here. And then the packaging on the actual product is pretty nice. So it just comes in this black package, which I actually really do like the packaging because I feel like it is very discreet. So if you have this in your purse and you accidentally spill your purse on the floor, this baby pops out. No one is really going to know exactly what it is unless they use it themselves. But uh, I like it because it is very discreet. And then when you pull it out of the package, this is what the disc itself looks like. It is 
flexible and it has the catch bag on it so if I push that down you'll see it has this little catch bag that is going to catch and hold the fluid when it comes out. There is a right and a wrong way um, to put this in so just to kind of show you guys this right here is the right way and if I push it the opposite way this is actually the wrong way. What you want to do is you want to have it where it looks like that because I was a little confused when I first used it. They do also recommend that you keep this little bag when you put your disc in so when you are done and you are switching it to a new one you can stick your used one back in the bag to dispose of it and it just kind of fits right back in there like that. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and read you guys the um, instructions on how to insert and take the Flex out from the Flex Fits website. So it says, step one, wash your hands. You always want to make sure you wash your hands before insertion and after removal. Find a position to insert your disc. Some sit over the toilet. Some stand with one leg elevated. Some insert in a full squat. Play around until you find a position that works best for you. Pinch the disc in half and begin inserting it into the vaginal canal, making sure you are pushing the edge that goes in first down toward the floor. Down and back is key so that it sits at an angle and fully covers the cervix. Tuck the rim above your pubic bone. Make sure it's pushed past the pubic bone as far as it can go. You shouldn't be able to feel the disc. If you're uncomfortable, just take it out and try it again. Practice makes perfect. Uh, or shoot us an email at hello at flexfits.com and we can help you out. Yeah, so those are the insertion instructions. Uh, for removal, relax. Making sure your muscles aren't tense will help with removing flex disc swiftly and comfortably. Sit over the toilet and bear down on your pelvic floor. The sensation will sort of be like that of pooping. Um, this will help pop the disc out from behind the pubic bone, making it easier for you to reach. Okay guys, I did not get these instructions when I first tried the product. I don't remember exactly. I think the instructions I used were the ones that came in the packaging and they were not this detailed. I wish I would have actually come to the website and read the website instructions because it would have made it so much easier, which you guys will see a little later. Um, with a clean finger, hook the disc from under the black rim in come here motion and pull, be sure, oh, and pull. Be sure to keep flex horizontal to the floor to prevent any spillage which I don't think that's really that important because then the next step is dump the contents of the disc into the toilet and place the used disc in the wrapper and dispose. So before I get into like the actual footage of me using the flex disc, um, I wanted to go ahead and kind of give you a little bit of history of like my body and my periods. So I use pads for my periods. I started off using pads and I still use them to this day. I have never used a tampon just because I, like as a teenager, I had always thought of maybe trying to use a tampon, but the TSS part of it um, freaked me out so bad that I just couldn't get past it and I never even tried to use a tampon. And even like right now as an adult, I don't think I would ever try to use a tampon just because I can't really get over that fear of TSS. And also I just don't really feel like or think that they would be very comfortable. Like the thought of them and how they work, it just doesn't sound comfortable to me. So I don't think I would ever even try to use a tampon. Also, when I was in high school, I actually had a friend who did get TSS from using tampons and hearing her story really freaked me out all the more. So like I said, I do use pads for my periods and the one thing that I hate about pads, which I'm pretty sure is the thing that everybody else hates about pads. 
Sorry if you hear a baby crying. My son is in his room. He's supposed to be taking a nap, but he, he is not. So uh, anyway, the reason why I hate using pads is because when you have a pad on and your blood comes out, it takes usually a few seconds, actually more than a few seconds for the blood to absorb into the pad. Like it doesn't just immediately just like, yeah, that is the thing that I hate the most about using pads is that little period of when the blood comes out to when it gets absorbed into the pad, having to wait for that, it's very uncomfortable. So as far as my periods go, I would say I have a pretty normal period. My period usually lasts uh, six to seven days. The first two days are usually my heaviest. The third day is usually like a normal or moderate flow. And then the last couple of days is usually uh, either, it's usually, it's either the last two or three days that are like a light flow. And then usually the very last day is just spotting. And I have also been told by my OB that I have a tilted cervix. So now that we have all of that information, I'm gonna go ahead and roll the footage of me testing this product out. Okay guys, so I just woke up and my period is here so today is going to be day one and if i would have known i was going to get my period today i would not have done my nails so i tried one of those uh, poly gel nail kits i have to try and get my disc in with these long nails so wish me luck so i am gonna go ahead and tie my hair up this is what it looks like. I have to stick this thing in there and we'll see how it goes. Okay, so I'm pretty sure I got it in. A little bit messy on my finger as expected. I don't really feel anything, so it doesn't feel like there's really anything in there, which is awesome. So I am going to go ahead and wear a pad for today. And if it doesn't leak at all, then tomorrow, maybe not. Yeah. All right, guys, so it has been about five hours since I put the Flex menstrual disc in. Um, so with this disc, you're supposed to be able to still use the bathroom if you need to. Um, and then also it did say you can like try bearing down and that would release some of the blood out of the disc cup. So I figured I would go ahead and try that. So what happened, I was standing here, uh, we're gonna have some company over, so I decided to go ahead and fix my daughter's hair. I was standing here fixing her hair and I started leaking. And I was like, yeah, I should probably use the bathroom. So I did and I was able to pee and um, I tried the bearing down thing, which it did work. It did release some of the blood. The thing that I did notice, that I am actually really excited about is I did not get any cramps this time, which usually when I get my period, I usually do get uh, menstrual cramps. I'm not bloated. I didn't get any cramps. So that is like a positive for me. And I don't know exactly why I leaked if it was just too much for it to hold or I don't know exactly what. I have been moving around a lot today though. Because we had people coming over, I've been like running around trying to clean. I don't know. I don't know exactly how I feel at this moment. I mean, it is brand new, so it could just have like a learning curve to it or something, but I'm glad I decided to put the pad on. Otherwise, I would have leaked on myself. So yeah, that is my update for now. I am probably not going to update again until I'm getting ready to go to bed, unless something crazy happens, but yeah. All right guys, so I have another update for you. So it is still day one and we are getting ready to go to bed. I did, I've had this thing in for probably about 10 hours or so. And actually I, I already switched it out. I had it in for 10 hours and then I was getting ready to go to bed. I'm like, well, I might as well change it out now. Um, it did leak again. So I had mentioned like five hours after it leaked and I kind of like pushed it and adjusted it a little bit. And then I wore it for another five hours and after the five hours it leaked again. When I was trying to get it out it was a little difficult I'm not gonna lie like it was pretty hard because you're supposed to grab like the rim of it and pull it uh, downward and horizontally 
to get it out but I couldn't find like where the rim was and then when I finally got it it was really hard for me to hook my finger onto the rim to pull it out and I think a big reason was because of my nails because of that I did cut them shorter I was kind of freaking out for a little bit because I was not able to kind of hook on the way you're it says you're supposed to I finally got it so I usually don't really leak when I sleep so I think in reality I probably would wear this just during the day and then at night just wear a pad while I'm sleeping because like I said usually I don't leak uh, so just for today I figured I would go ahead and test out the overnight um, to see how it does overnight so I am gonna wear it for tonight all right guys so it is day two now doing the flex disc so this morning I woke up and I didn't leak at all last night which is really good and I also forgot to mention yesterday when I did say that the flex disc leaked it leaked but it wasn't like like a huge leak so this morning I put a new disc in and I went shopping and I probably was out for like three hours so yeah after all of that grocery shopping I came home and I didn't leak at all which is pretty crazy there was a couple of times where I was kind of like not while I was out shopping but after I came home and I was putting the, gro the groceries away I kind of felt like I was going to leak but this time I went to the bathroom and there was no blood at all it was just my urine and I wiped and there was no blood I did try doing um, the bearing down to see if the disc was full I could empty a little bit of it. I tried doing that. I bared down and nothing came out. So that means it's not overflowing. It's not leaking. So, so far, so good. So it is the update for the end of day number two. And good news, I didn't leak at all from the last time I did an update. It didn't really have as much blood as I thought it was going to after being in there all day long. And I don't know if maybe this is just like a lighter period. Usually my first two days are pretty heavy. So yeah, that is my update for now. I am going to go ahead and go to bed. I did put a pad on because I don't want to use another disc tonight. Because like I said, I usually don't leak after the first night. And even on the first night, it's usually just like a very small amount if I do. So All right, guys. So it is day three of using the flex disc. So I put one in this morning and it is currently like 1030. Um, today when I put it in, it didn't leak all day up until about 30 minutes before I took it out. I feel like it was because of like a position type of thing, like it felt like it shifted. I was just kind of like walking around, bending over to pick things up and stuff like that. Today I didn't bleed as much as I did yesterday, so I don't think it's leaking because of it filling up or having too much blood in it. Yeah, I mean that is just my update for today. It worked all day long up until 30 minutes ago. I am going to go ahead and go to bed and then tomorrow I will test out another one and let you guys know how that goes. Well, I actually never got to try the product out for the fourth day like I was supposed to just because my period that it was last month when I filmed um, that footage it only lasted three days which is pretty unusual for me like I said my periods usually last six to seven days it only lasted three days and on that fourth day it was my day of my spotting and so I didn't actually put another flex disc in just because I feel like it really wasn't enough um, enough blood to even be able to test the product out. I was really just spotting and I, I also didn't want to waste a, another disc when it was pretty much the end of my period and also I'm not sure if it was because of using the flex disc that my period was so much shorter or if it was just going to be a short period anyway, which I usually don't really have short periods like ever. I think maybe like once every couple of years I will have like a shorter period, but it was just very unusual. So I was 
kind of thinking like, is this because of the flex disc? It's making my period shorter or is it just what was going to happen anyway? Um, I will never know. But anyway, after testing the disc out, I am going to go ahead and give you guys my final thoughts. So the big question is, would I use this product again? And my answer is yes, I would. Even though I did get quite a few leaks, um, I would still use it again based on how comfortable I felt during the time that I was using it and during the time that I didn't leak. I also feel like this is a product that takes practice and the more that you use it, uh, the easier it'll be. And I also hope that one day I will be able to get it to the point where I have zero leaks. Um, I liked that uh, it was pretty easy to insert and once I had it inserted, I couldn't actually feel it in there. I also loved that I didn't have any bloating or cramping like usual. Taking this thing out though was a struggle, you guys. Like at one point, I honestly felt like I was never going to get this thing out. I kind of started freaking out a little bit, um, but the taking out process was very messy. Every time I took it out, there was blood everywhere. And also the smell was something that what I was not expecting. The smell was very, very strong uh, because it is the fresh blood. It's not being absorbed into like a cotton pad. I felt like it was just very strong. So if you are a person who gets woozy with blood or like seeing blood or the smell of blood, this might not be the product for you. So after my experience with using the Flex Disc, I wanted to go ahead and share a few tips um, that might help you guys out if you are thinking of trying this product. So tip number one is when you are inserting the disc, it is very important that you are angling it downward and not horizontal. Um, it feels kind of weird at first, but it is really key in making sure you get it in the correct position. So tip number two is once you get the disc mostly inserted, I found that it is easiest to use your thumb to push it into the final position. Tip number three is to cut and file your fingernails or uh, if you have nail extensions, uh, make sure you are very careful when you are inserting and taking the disc out because you do not want to scratch or damage your vaginal wall. Tip number four is if you feel like you are about to leak, uh, try doing a Kegel. I found that when I felt like I was about to leak and I would do a Kegel, it would stop the leak from happening. Tip number five is to do Kegel exercises throughout the day. I felt like this really helped me on the second day to make sure the disc was kept in place all day long and that was a day when I didn't leak, um, especially like after squatting or bending over to pick something up. Tip number six, I did not know, and that is when you are removing the disc, um, sit on the toilet and bear down to help, and I noticed that it did help the disc to pop out from behind the pubic bone, and then take your finger and grab a hold of the ring, and once you have a hold of it, then relax your muscles and pull it out horizontally. That I found was the easiest way for me to get the disc out. So before I end this video, I thought it would be a good idea to answer a few frequently asked questions. And the first one is, I have a heavy flow, will flex work for me? So the majority of flex users do have a heavier flow. They say the flex disc can hold up to six teaspoons of fluid and the average person will bleed three teaspoons of fluid every 24 hours. So the answer is yes. The second question is, can teens use Flex? Teens who are on the smaller side of their age group might not be able to use Flex. So usually if you feel like you might be on the smaller side, it would be a good idea to talk to your doctor first. The third question is, I have an IUD, can I use Flex? And the answer is yes, you can, but you do risk accidentally pulling your IUD out when you are removing the Flex disc. So uh, one thing you can do though, is you can go to your doctor and ask them to trim your IUD strings to be flush with your cervix. Um, 
Doing that will not make it harder to take the IUD out when it is time, but it does reduce the risk of you accidentally pulling it out when you are removing the flex disc. The fourth question is, I have a low, high, or tilted cervix. Can I use flex? I have a tilted cervix and I use flex just fine. They say that it is designed for all women, so whether you have a high, low, or tilted cervix, you should be able to use flex just fine. Question five is, can you use flex with endometriosis? And the answer is yes. So there are tons of flex customers who have endometriosis who use the flex disc, and actually there are a bunch of them who swear by it. And the last question is, can you use flex with PCOS? The answer is yes, you can. There are no issues with using the flex disc if you have PCOS. So after watching this review, I am curious to know if any of you guys who are watching are thinking you might be interested in trying the Flex Disc. If you are, please let me know in the comments section down below. Also, if you have any other questions in regards to the Flex Disc, you can also leave those down below as well. I will do my best to answer them to the best of my knowledge. So there you have it. That is my review of the Flex Menstrual Disc. I want to say thank you so much for watching this video. Before you click off, don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share this video with anybody who you think might find it helpful. I love you guys and I will plan on seeing you in my next video. Bye!